Tonight, a teen boy claims he had a sexual relationship with his teacher. He is here exclusively to tell us how and why this happened. Plus, an autistic man is jailed after stabbing his mother in the stomach and back, but she says he's a gentle giant and she wants him home with her. So let's get started. Tony Sutton, a high school Spanish teacher, is charged with having had sex with her teen student. She has pleaded not guilty, but we have the 16-year-old boy here with us to give us his side of the story. Take a look at this. Consensual relationship that lasted months. She is Tony Sutton. She's accused of carrying on with the young teen for over six months. Text messages between the two describing the acts were found by the young man's mother. Different types of sex acts over the course of a several month period. We believe took place in various locations, including her car, her home, as well as in the classroom. And she's the nicest, sweetest lady you'll ever meet in your life. Sutton says she's not guilty. And she's been a teacher in San Diego for six years. Sutton has one child and lives with her boyfriend and his two kids. Joining us on a heat to set again for attorney of counsel to the Cochran firm, Stacy Kaiser, psychotherapist, Shagoon Odu Olowu, himself a former teacher and youth mentor, and Dan Gillian, attorney for the student involved. And we have the alleged victim as well. We will be protecting his identity as a young man. He's only 16, and we will call him Zach. Now, some of Zach's allegations, I have to remind people, have not been independently confirmed by HLN. Here, though, is what we know about the teacher. Tony Sutton, 37, high school Spanish teacher, volleyball coach, accused of sexual relations with a 15-year-old, faces 11 felony charges, could get nine years in prison. Her attorney has entered a not guilty plea. I want to start with Zach. Zach, first of all, thanks for joining us. We really do appreciate it. How did, oh, this, welcome. How did this get started? What happened? Um, well, one day, um, it was just me and her, and... We were in her classroom, and she would always come to me about how her boyfriend never satisfied her sexually. And that day, we talked about her boyfriend not satisfying her. And then in the classroom that day, she called me over to show me some volleyball videos. And since I felt that she wasn't getting any love or like she wasn't getting any affection at home, I thought it was right for me to kiss her. Did, did it, it seem bizarre to you that your teacher was talking to you about her sexual life? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't think that because um, everybody has problems and I, I just thought she needed one, someone to talk to. Did she talk about her boyfriend? Yes, yeah, she did. How many times do you guys actually have sex? Uh, I estimate a number around 30. Okay, and do and you think did you know that what she was doing, Zach, was illegal? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, Zach, I'm gonna, I, do you have anything else you wanna add to this conversation or do you want us to know? No. Okay, I, listen, hold tight, my friends. Stay right there, we appreciate you being here. Anahita, how do you defend this? Well, look, if, if these allegations are true, if there are text messages that the parents allegedly found, and if his statement is true, then it might really be more about mitigating rather than getting a not guilty verdict. So the defense lawyer is gonna argue she's been a teacher for 11 years. She has no prior acts of misconduct, no criminal background. She's a mother, she's a church going woman. And in a lot of these cases, Dr. Drew, the, the alleged perpetrators, they've been sexually abused. They've been victims themselves. Well, then why not say she's sick, she's in trouble, she needs to be removed from the school for a while, monitored in And a that's what's going to happen. That's why the attorney is going to argue that is a mitigating factor. So if indeed that is the case, then her attorney will argue, look, she was a victim herself. She doesn't belong in jail. She belongs in therapy. She needs counseling. Stacey, agree? Uh, or, should well. <laughs> she have, or should she have gotten the therapy long before all this happened? Because uh, yeah. she's damaged a kid in the meantime. A hundred percent. If she this happened. Yeah. If she, this happened. She needs therapy. There are definite psychological problems going on here. But part of what we're talking about is these predators, these perpetrators, and that is what she is. They're always nice. They're always good people. That's always their story. And in the same time, they're also bad, evil people who are molesting children. So they're on right. so, so, <laughs> But Stacey, uh, uh, you, you've treated kids that have been, males that have been in this position. I have. And, and people seem to confuse a female victim and a male victim, and though the male would be somehow welcoming this, you know, it will have no impact on the young males. But you 
you've certainly treated these guys and they have a huge impact. It has a huge impact on them. It impacts their self-esteem. It impacts their ability oftentimes to perform sexually when they get older. It impacts the relationships that they choose. And part of what I don't like about what happens is a lot of times when this happens to a young man, their peers think they're cool. They think they're the lucky one and they don't realize that it's actually well, really e traumatic. Even the kids themselves think, oh, this is what I always wanted to do, but they feel weirdly ashamed. Shame is a very prominent symptom, is it not? And they don't know what to do with it so they end up not even telling their peers oftentimes but you and you're a teacher yeah i you were you, you actually you you i thought you were gonna you sort of had a physical reaction when poor zach reported what had happened to him it, it it's mind-boggling to me that a teacher 22 years older than a student will have a conversation about being sexually unfulfilled with her boyfriend in a classroom that bothers me one as a teacher two just as a human wait being. wait wait it, it more it boggles your mind i hope not just bothers no it's just mind-boggling right right because it's it, it, it one there's no place for it and it's just it's a horrible it's just a horrible I've seen it happen before. Let me just put that out there. I've seen students and, and talk to students, and I know schools where teachers, that kind of stuff has happened. But what bothers me is this 15-year-old basically thought that it was, a, like, they had this conversation. Like, he didn't think anything was wrong. Well, like, they because, were peers almost. Right. And, and a, a teacher. Big people take care of happen. little people. I've said it a thousand times. Dan, happen. you're his attorney. What's your position on this? Well, you know, I want to give a shout-out, first of all, to Zach for even doing this. I, I absolutely. A thousand percent. Um, it takes a lot of courage, and I'm proud of I'm proud of you, Zach. And, and, and I'm going to say, Dan, and Zach too, if, if you're listening there, Zach, which is that by, by speaking out and talking about this, hopefully, sort of the not just the shame which young, some of these young men experience, but that the curtain can be pulled back and other victims can step forward. I mean, you were leading the way, Zach. Uh, applause to you, my friend. Thank you. And that's what this is about. I mean, it, it was parents were all scared of the pedophiles, and we know they're out there, and they get attracted to where the kids are. Um, but what really disturbs me about, the, about this is that the school district themselves, you know, they're mandated reporters. There's a, uh, they're supposed to be on the, the watch out, you know, and I've, I've gone after the school district many times. And, uh, for other cases? or For, for other cases, cases um, um, many times. And I'm just, you know, I'm just appalled by, by the fact that we have to deal with this. The parents, we know the pedophiles are out there. We don't want to think about it. But you know what? The people are supposed to be thinking about that. Are the, the school administrators, the teachers, well, let, let me, to be let reporting me, anything that they suspect? Well, I thought I, I understand the school to be an ally in this fight. Let me throw out maybe something that's a little unpopular, but is it the administrators or the teachers' unions that protect the student? <laughs> well, teachers? because she's on paid but we can leave. Talk about the she's teachers. on paid leave. You can't fire a teacher like you. I mean, just the you can't. She's on paid leave. She had sex with a student and it was not, ongoing and she's be, getting hold paid. On, let's be fair. No let's one finds be, that disgusting. Let's allegedly. be fair. These are, allegedly like, these are allegations allegedly. at this point. Nothing's been yeah, They doubled her bail. Well, the, look, none of this They has, doubled her bail. There's a presumption of innocence, Shagoon. You should know this by they now. I think I've taught you bail. well by now. They doubled her bail. Can I... Can I finish? Oh, yes. They doubled they doubled the bail because they added additional felony charges, but the reality is there's no conviction yet. She has not had her day in court. It could be that she is guilty. So they but just we added can't them jump to we, we can well no, that's how our system works, right? Charges are brought. The defendant is entitled to their day in court with a constitutional presumption of innocence and let those jurors decide whether or not she's guilty. Do you think so she's I think, guilty? Let's oh. just I mean, do you think she's guilty? I, I have no um, side word. either way. I believe that if it's in your true, heart of heart, wait, if, wait, if wait, if year old boy is going on television I, talking about being you. talked by a teacher. Uh, hang on, we, we can't even begin to, you know, we're, we can't expect that about something like that, but, but let me just say, what do you think? Is, is You know what I'm asking? Is it the administrators think you're doing a tough job? They're stuck with the teachers unions well, on one side, or the parents on the other, or the state laws on the other. I mean, there's so many different organizations they're incumbent upon. In my experience with pedophiles and predators, um, you know, this isn't their first time, and someone out there had to be watching this teacher, and something should have bug them. They should have been watching. This simply cannot happen with a healthy teacher in school. And by the way, she might be have a constitutional right, you know, to be presumed innocent, but when you put it in writing, you're going down. All right, we're going to keep it going. Ellen. These charges reflect an ongoing sexual relationship between the defendant, who's a teacher, um, with a student, a 16-year-old boy. And she's the nicest, sweetest lady you'll ever meet in your life. The charges include voodoo acts on a child, unlawful sexual intercourse, and sodomy of a person under 18. These, we believe, took place in various locations, including her car, her home, as well as in the classroom. Teaching is her life, and obviously no matter what happens with this case, that's over. I mean, she'll never be a teacher again. 
Tony Sutton is a 39-year-old Spanish teacher charged with having had sex with an underage student. He was 15 years old at the time. Back with Anahita, Stacy, Shagoon, Dan. We also have the alleged victim with us. His name, we will call him Zach to protect him. And of course, some of Zach's allegations cannot be independently confirmed by HLN. Zach, have you been able to go back to school now that this is all out there? Uh, I've tried to go back to school, but um, it's just been hard because some people talk about it and some people don't talk about it. Do your peers mistreat you? Um, it depends because some, it depends on the day with them. Like, I don't, I don't really know when. Like, Zach, let me ask it. this. Let me ask this. I, in, in my dealings with other young uh, young men like you who've been through what you've been through, they initially think, oh, cool, and then it becomes uncool. How did it become uncool for you? Well, when they start talking about how, like, what happened or, like, what did we do? Like, what sexual acts, like, did we do? And according to police, your teacher was a family friend. Is that true? Uh, I wouldn't say that she was a family friend, no. Okay. And how did you guys get caught? Uh, her boyfriend, uh, he went to the school wow. and he, he told the police, I guess, and the police started the investigation. And are you getting help or support or treatment of any kind? Yeah, I, yeah, I am. I'm getting therapy. Got it. Uh, Stacy. so you've been, again, through this with a number of young men. Uh, is what he's describing typical? He's describing total accuracy. You know, teenagers are nosy, so they ask a lot of inappropriate questions. And they're also really judgmental and critical. So the ones that don't think he was cool are going to be mocking him and making fun of him. And that's part of the fallout that he's going to be dealing with as long as he's in that community. Shagun, as a teacher dealing with this age group, you were very, you were very tuned into the peer group being influential and in how this is affecting this young man. Yeah, because you wonder now, now, amongst young boys, it's cool, right? I mean, you know, hey, who at 15, you're a young boy, you know, you're going through puberty, you, you, you start having sex, and then, oh my gosh, it's like the double bonus, you're having sex with the teacher, but now, everything that comes with it. Now it's become this big media scandal and he can't go back to school. He doesn't know how his own friends are gonna react. Strangers, gossip, social media that we've talked about on the show, how fast things can spread like wildfire. It's it's scary and you know, I feel bad, I just feel for the guy. And not only that, Chagoon, I, I, you're, you're sort of putting a, a, a light on the fact that the peers are judging him and shaming him. But really, the, in that age group, Stacey, back me up on this, feels as though they cause things that happen. And in this situation, this is an adult with a child. He didn't cause anything. He was, he was swept into something that the adult caused. A hundred percent. Most of the kids, and I know that Zach feels this way as well, walk around blaming themselves. So now he's going to feel guilty that she is going to a trial. And he's going to feel guilty about what the boyfriend did. And he's putting it all on himself instead of where the responsibility should be, which is on her. Zach, does, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Listen, man, don't don't feel guilty. This this You didn't ask for this. I understand that it seemed like something that you were in control of, but the whole point of having a teacher is to have an adult there that takes care of you, not who takes care of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm saying. And Dan, has he been able to, you know, sort of express some of this to you and get proper help and things? He has, you know, but there's a double standard out there, unfortunately. And For you know, females versus males? Right. You know, when I, I started doing this 20 years ago, I was defending school districts in cases like this, and even then, you know, we kind of looked at these cases differently. When it was a boy, it just wasn't the same as a girl. And I, and I think that society is finally recognizing, with the help of people just like look you. look at the outcomes. Is the outcomes of the young male. Without help, if, they, if they, he had kept quiet, if he hadn't said anything, if that boyfriend hadn't found out about this, if poor Zach had kept quiet, it would have had a marked impact on him. He's getting the proper help to make it not be the case. Right. But it could have had a huge impact. You were trying to say something. I was just going to ask you, why is it that this double standard exists? Why is it if this were a 39-year-old male teacher that was molesting a 14 or 15-year-old girl, you know we why? would want him to get the death penalty. Shagoon, but, why is it bear, different? Bear, back me up with this. And Dan, you can even ring it if you want to. <laughs> but as we, well, all of us men have been 15-year-old males. Yeah. And, and a 15-year-old male thinks this would be the greatest thing in the world. That's, that's what he's. That's all he fantasizes about. The fact is when it happens it's destructive right. so that's why we all we all think oh we finally got what he wanted that's an unenlightened point of view that's someone who's only been a 15 year old male with those sorts of desires and wishes not seen the reality of what happens to young males when they grow through something like that but take it take it even when, further when the he, graduate 
yeah. the, the Mrs. Right. Robinson, yeah. the whole idea of the younger yeah. man, Motley Crue records, yeah. hot, hot for, for teacher. teacher. It's when been like that. It's always stories, been in society. When you read some of these stories, you hear the word consensual. He had, con even in this case, he had consensual right. sex with the teacher. The law does not recognize consent right. when it's a minor and an adult. So I think like the thing you always say really resonates. It's the bigger people that have to take care of the yes. little people. Even if he was willing to have sex uh, with her, whatever, even if whatever he wanted, he wanted it. to do, that's the the kid that right. gets swept into this exactly the kid that you want to hold the boundaries with. Dan, he was 15 years old when this yeah. happened, and his brain, you know, he was a, a boy, that's you right. know, and and his brain is still developing now. Oh, there's particularly just, no, this part, the frontal right. prefrontal <laughs> cortex, the part that contains our impulses. Now I got to remind everybody that Tony Sutton, the teacher, has entered a not guilty plea. Uh, USA Today did a study, and now you guys should hear this, and found that 9,000 educators who had been disciplined by state officials were not put in the national database. 200 of those involved allegations of sexual or physical abuse. This means that teachers can get jobs in other states with without a record of past offenses. What is that? A lot of that has to do with the teachers' unions, and That's I can tell thought. you, Dr. Drew, we need to overhaul some of these unions. But, I know but, it's a but difficult it, task, but... but, but it, listen, it, it's, listen, we all have a deep desire that teachers should be supported, right? Absolutely, Everybody, but, but, but not to the point about, that they're criminals exactly. are supported within their ranks. There's a case right now where a teacher admitted to molesting a student. He got fired from the school and the union is suing the school in order to get him a pension, Dr. Drew. That is a problem. That is going beyond having a union supporting educators who should be held, you know, to a high standard in our society. But come on, this is a perfect example. This, the example I just told you, we need to overhaul this whole teacher's union that we have. Stacey, last comments? Here. I was just going to say it's union's job to protect the teachers, but someone else is supposed to protect the kids. The teachers. Right. Yes. <laughs> to your point, it needs right. to be the teachers, the principals, the counselors, yes. the administrators. Yes. Uh, listen. I, listen. I, the, my deepest, deepest. Uh, I don't even have a word to describe respect and 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 enthusiasm for teachers out there. Particularly, just like we, we talk about police, they're bad within. They're bad. And you got to, as a profession, you got to police your own. You can't let something get in the way of you policing your own profession because then you all take the negative mark. That's not okay. Teachers need to be supported and you need to solve this problem from within. Dan, thank you for being here. And Zach, mostly thank you for speaking up about this. I think you will help many other young males and women who may go through something like this. Yeah, you guys are welcome. All right, buddy. Next